This video is all about Allen keys. Oh, it's muy difficile. Sí. I've just seen something that's not good. You're not putting this in the video. So today in this video, I'm gonna show you how we second fix our outlet on here, our controller on here for our digital shower, and also our pan head at the top. And we're also gonna install the digital shower box as well. Click the sub, the like, and all that stuff. Let's get on with it. Hold tight. Remember, you can buy all the plumber parts stuff ooh, on Amazon. <laughs> Do it at the end of the video. This is really quite simple work, okay? We need to put in our internal piece in here, which is gonna go into a half inch thread, and that's gonna stick out in here. This is gonna be where our handset is. Now the handsets on installations like this, mainly used by my wife when she's having a color, whatever that means. Usually it means about an hour's worth of chatting to our mate. Then what we're gonna do is very simply, we've got a plate that goes on here, and that has a controller that plugs into this down here, right? So if you have a closer look, <laughs> Got a nice little cover on it on there. If you go back to the old video, and I'll leave a link to that video, you'll be able to watch this at the end. There'll be a link on screen, so don't worry, you're not gonna miss it. We ducted this here down to this point. So if we ever wanted to replace this for another digital shower, if it wasn't ducted, we'd have to rip all these tiles off the wall and it'd be a major issue. But because we've ducted it, what you do is you tie on your new control wire up in the loft and you'd be able to pull that down and through and you'd be loving life, it'd be great. And then next up, like I said, we're gonna get that up in there, but let's firstly get this on here. Now you're gonna see this is quite a big hole and get a good look in there, Max. So you can see how far back this is, just because we've put on uh, the substrate under here, then we've got the thickness of our adhesive, then the thickness of a tile, and that can build out. So when you're doing this sort of work, have that in your mind, how much is it gonna build out, yeah? So here we go, here's the bit, an integrated piece. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know why we're doing that voice. Nice little set of Weera hexes here, beautiful. So I'm just gonna undo these two here and we'll be able to take this central brass bit out and that means we can tighten this up without worrying about damaging or scratching any of this lot up, all right? Right, so you look, if you don't know how to use an Allen key, all right, just don't bother watching the rest of this video because you're not gonna understand any of it. If you can use an Allen key, then you're allowed to continue. In the end here, this is another bit, we're gonna use a slightly larger Allen key. Keep yourself a certificate. <laughs> so you're gonna be able to know how to use that now. Oh, dearie me. How do you use it, Dad? Oh, I've just found out. Bigger one there. Good way, actually, of using Allen keys. <laughs> this video is all about Allen keys. Uh, is if you wanna find out which size to use, don't take each one out of its spindle. You can just go like that. Oh, it fits in that one. Oh, it doesn't fit in that one. So at the moment, as you can see on here, I've put PTFE tape on as a temporary measure. Not that it was actually piped up or anything. I really don't know why I did this, but it was a long time ago. It was a year ago. Think back to what you were doing a year ago, and it was around that time that I was doing this. Loctite 55. Pre-sealing pipe sealing cord. Hot and cold water. Potable water and gas. This stuff is the nuts. Next thing you wanna do is, on this particular one here, we're gonna get this in like so. Now look at that, how far in that is at the moment. That's touching the end of the thread now. And then we can see we've got quite a bit of distance of about four or five threads on the end here sticking out still. So straight away, I'm happy. If you haven't got that, if, it's lit, if this shoulder or whatever you're installing is already tight up against those tiles, you're gonna have to do something about that, which could be putting a small extension in here, which you can do, uh, but there's definitely gonna have to be something done. Uh, one thing I just wanna do as well, when I do this particular bit, this piece wants to go on here now, like that, and that sits on that little shroud there nicely, all right? Just gonna pop that on there. Oh, one thing I forgot, the plumber's AK-47. Take the safety off. Oh, God, this is a bit of an old one, isn't it? Nice, that's one way of checking, isn't it? Right, I'm gonna have to stick this through now, and I, you know what's gonna happen here, Max, I'm gonna get this everywhere. Who do you think more upper class, plumbers or sparkies? Sparkies. <laughs> I've worked with a lot of plumbers in my time. <sighs> Toilet roll, barely use that now, mate. Now I've got a B-Day. As you know, watch the latest video where we put a massive joint of pork in the bottom of a B-Day, smeared Nutella all over it in the weirdest video on the internet. So the reason I'm doing this is just making sure that we've, we don't let anything through. Uh, usually what, I, what I'd do is I would put in the brass piece first, wouldn't I? And then gunk this around the brass, but I can't do that on this job because of the fact we've got this shroud here in the way when we do it. So now we're gonna get that in there like so. I'm just gonna sort of puggle that about a bit so that pulls that through. And that is now, there we go. 
that's in there now. And if you wanted to, you could add some more if you can get your gun in there, but I don't, I don't think I'm gonna do that on this one. As you can see, we've got these two O-rings on here, and that's what's gonna make a watertight seal. Our water is gonna come out of this spout here, where we've got that Allen key bit. So I should just be able to push this on there like so, just like that, and then do up our bottom Allen key on each side. Next bit, real easy. I mean, I think you know what's gonna happen here. Usually what I'd do is like, I'd hang it in there and that'd be great, wouldn't it? But later on, when I turn the water on and test this, that might be a bit of a shock to the system, mightn't it? Be it hanging up on there. Make sure you've got O-rings in the bottom. I hate these shower heads. I don't like this particular type. I prefer a big sort of pan head type. So we're just gonna pop that on there like so. Mark my words, you're gonna thank me for this, right? Get yourself an old towel or a good towel. You're gonna to fold it up into a few little bits. Okay, because also later on we're going to stand on this. Just pop that there like that. Make sure there are things on there and just cover that over, all right? And then later on, when that springs into life, if you're not here, at least it doesn't spray the whole room everywhere, all right? So, the next bit we're going to do is we're going to get our controller on, okay? We've got an up arrow there, which usually denotes that it's up, all right? And then at the back here, we've got this little plastic shroud there that covers that up and that's what this plugs into, all right? A couple of little parameters that I want to work with personally on this bit here. Number one is I kind of want the center of this to be in line with the center of that, so we've got a nice little bit of symmetry. And then after that, it's really quite simple. Now, a lot of the time, what you would have to do when you're drilling into a wall like this is drill all the way through and then use plugs. But for you guys who've watched this already and you've seen me first fix this on this channel, you'll know that I've already put plywood behind here. So we know that we can always get an accurate, brilliant fix in every time. So you don't have to worry about relying on plasterboard, plugs or anything like that. Just hate that sort of thing. Need a spirit level, small spirit level like that. Or I could use my Bosch laser level that I've got. Bought another one of these. Literally, how many 5.5 mil drill bits have I bought in my lifetime? They're like pipe slices, you can lose them all the time, it's really annoying. But there you go, I've got another one here, I promise not to lose it. Come back to me in probably about a week's time and it'll be gone. I'd have left it in a loft somewhere. Why have they put this plastic on it? I mean, this will fall in the ocean. Em, while you're down there, can you just chuck up a Sharpie? She said yes. Now this is gonna be a niche joke. If she'd have said, who do you think I am, Obadiah Hakeswell, I'd have been like, oh, Emily. Do you get that, Max? No. Or Badaya Hakeswell. You can't kill me. <laughs> That's what he used to do, he had this twitch. Sharp, Sean Bean. No? No. It's mid 90s? No? no. no? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Won the ashes. Right, there we go. And it's good. Right, so look, we might as well just get this popped on here now. There you go, and that's clipped in and on. Hopefully I can just push that all the way in. This is where we realise there's actually a problem with this install. Oh yeah, a little bit of munge at the back. I'm just gonna grab my slotted screwdriver and my small ox hammer, one of the best hammers ever made. Chop that out. Oh yeah. You know what that noise is, don't you? It's a noise of wood. I just won't be able to get that all the way back. Needs a little bit more. It's a great thing about slotted screwdrivers. Sometimes you can use them on slotted screws. But 95% of the time, that's not gonna happen. They are the unofficial chisel in your box. There. So that was, oh, look at that. See, just a little bit of work on that, we're all good. So you could put your spirit level across the top, but a more accurate reading you're gonna get by going on the long edge. Has that gone through? No. <laughs> Didn't need a pencil, Max. Emily! Can I have a pencil, please? Sharpie's not long enough. Story of my life. So get that on the side there. Glossy tiles, the worst when it comes to getting a pencil mark on. So once you've done them, make sure you just make those proper crosses. So you can see them. These should be nice and easy to, to drill. Especially with the drill bits that I'm using. They are the best tile drill bits ever. And I am gonna link them in the shop. They're gonna go through this like butter. No hammer, nothing. Right, change of plan. 
You know, normally I would use big screws and go straight into the plywood, all right? But we aren't gonna do that. Let me show you why. So they supplied, the manufacturer for this shell supplied quite small screws and those heads are gonna recess nicely into those bits there. If I use my own screws with my own heads, you know what's gonna happen. They're not gonna recess properly and you know, I'll kick off like I usually do. God, that is. As ever, before you do, Anything like screwing up stuff, just make sure you cover up your holes with a little blob of silicon on there. Your wall will thank you later, especially if uh, water starts getting into these bits here, all right? We'll just pop some silicon around the back of this and then that will seal up our big hole there that we've got. Okay, right, let's do the next bit. Let's get the fascia on. This is the fascia. It's been under the spare bed for a whole year. And now it's finally going to its resting place. This is, I do enjoy this sort of work. It's when you're on site and you get to this stage, it's just like, mate, I'm so glad I'm here. Finally got to this bit, putting all this lovely stuff on. Tell you what, that lines up lovely on that bit of tile there as well, doesn't it? And that wasn't planned either. <laughs> just one of those happy accidents. Usually with this sort of thing, you'll find the grommet screw that holds this onto the spindle on here is hidden underneath this little handle bit here. So we've got corner, corner, corner. So that means that's got to go like that. Corner, corner, corner. So there's only really one way it can go on. There you go. Okay, so that's in there like so. And then just do this up. Don't have to go mad tight. That is literally it now. Screw in the little handle bit just here. And we're all good. So that one there will act as a diverter to divert between the handset and the, hot and the top pan head. And then this one here is your on and off and also your hot and cold. So this one has a little stopper on it. Yet again, just get it so it's in the upward position. If you want to change, if you've got a shower valve and you want the handles to be in different positions, then most of the time you'll be able to change that about. For this, what I'm doing at the moment, I'm quite happy with these. And this isn't the bathroom I'm going to use anyway. This is going to be the one that my mum and dad use when they come around for Christmas. And I genuinely couldn't give a damn whether they think that's nice like that or not. I love you, mum. Love you, dad. Right, okay, so we've got that bit in there now. So looking back, Getting somewhere now, aren't we? It's looking like a bathroom after a whole year. Got to sort that bit out. Right, so let's get this top pan head in. Another real easy bit. We'll still mastic it, even though there's probably not gonna be any water flying up there, unless of course there's two bodies and a close embrace in this bathroom. Uh, but we'll still put it in there anyway because we're proper tradesmen. So first thing I want to do with this, now I want you to just look at the installation here. You're not going to have this problem, but I am, because we've got this kind of weird old roof bit. This used to be the end of the house. So this, this slanted 45 bit of ceiling here uh, was the old kind of roof part. So what we're going to have to do is I can't, sometimes what you do is you get the pan head on. Look, you can see how long it's been under the bed for. What you could do, what a lot of you would do is you tighten this up now on the arm and then you twist it all up like that. I mean, I don't really recommend you do that anyway, but you can do if you want. You could do that just like the guys are outside at the moment, chopping up ceiling to, uh, roof tiles. You hear that? Cheers guys. Like they said about communism, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. To which George Orwell said, show me the omelet. Yeah, learn a lot here to watch him plumber punch. Yet again, you're going to watch this from my perspective. How to put on Loctite 55. I always just run the first few straight into the thread like that, like so. And then you've got to cross it over a little bit and just run it round a few times. Why do we use Loctite 55 and not PTFE tape on these sorts of installs? It's basically because I've probably put too much on there. Uh, it because it's a th corded thread look we've got a little cut we can just go cut that off it's nice because it's a corded thread with thread seal in it it locks up the fitting ptfe doesn't really do that and if you wind it in and then wind it back like half a turn it might leak this sort of stuff seems to be really resilient to that happening because i first fixed this i'm very confident that it's not going to go all over the place but so we're just going to pop that in there like so and look we've got the room to do it up and you really don't really have to go mad with this sort of thing. Just get it in there like that. Maybe one more. I get it so it's pointing down. Someone on the internet is going to say that this is the wrong thing to do. And they're going to come up with some weird reason as to why. Comment if you like. Comment below. I'll let the rest of my fans jump on you. Like the troll you are. 
and destroy your day on the internet. And you'll wish that what you'd done instead was talk to some real human beings rather than hammer out nasty comments on a plumbing video. It says more about you than it does me. Right, and that just pushes up there. Obviously, this has got love, mucky prints on there and everything, but we'll deal with that later. And then we're just gonna pop the head on here. Now, good little trick, just pop your thumb on the middle and then just start doing that. And in the end, it will catch. And look, we've, we're doing up now. And after that, you can just try to twist this and move the top bit with your hand. And that is pretty much it, you don't really have to do much else. That's the easy bit done. The hard bit is up in the loft. Let's go up there now. <laughs> Here we are, my favorite place, weird laugh. Uh, right, so, I mean, this is a very similar install to the one next to it because it's exactly the same shower. So, what I'm gonna do with this one, we're gonna sight it just here and I'm just going to describe to you what we've got up here already. So we've got our two pipes that you guys have seen us first fix already on this channel. They're sticking up out over there at the moment, which means that we're going to flop them down to here. We're going to try and clip them as early as we can. So it keeps things neat. Okay. But this sort of pipe inherently isn't very neat, but we're trying to get this done, aren't we? Up in a loft. The things that matter to me is that the pipe is as flat down as it can be. So insulation can go over it. And also, so it just can't get kicked about and that it's safe and won't leak. The other thing, if you have a really good look, we've got our control wire that we've pulled all the way and we've connected that at the back already. That's gonna clip into the back, back of this box as well. And you can see our duct coming up that we installed earlier on, um, which means that if we ever have any troubles, we can replace that control wire really easily without having to do anything to the tiles. Hey, <laughs> that's English for yes, well done. So now we need to think about how we're gonna pipe this up. Now, usually if you're gonna have one shower, so we've got our one shower here already, you could probably tee off the main 22 millimeter hot and cold balance feeds out quite easily. It'd be really, really easy to do, but you need to account for the fact that we've got two showers here and there might be times when it's reasonably high occupancy in this house, like Christmas or when I've got friends over and that sort of thing. And we need to make sure that both the showers are gonna get an adequate supply to them so they don't start getting hot and cold and scalding and all that sort of stuff. So I could be a scumbag, right? There's 15 mil pipe up here, right? with two lever valves that I've fitted. You can tell I've fitted it because it looks absolutely beautiful. Don't worry, I'm gonna clip these two at the end of this video. Um, what I could do is just tee into these and then bring the hot and cold down into there. Yay! But that's not great, is it? Because we're then trying to feed two showers off two 50 mil feeds. The better thing to do is to pop these up like that. And we've got 22 mil here, 22 mil here, and effectively lead, it's going to be quite difficult to do because these are kind of in the way. What we'll do is we'll pop up here, go over here like so, pop our two 15mm lever valves about here or maybe along here and then pipe up and over into that. So then what we're doing is we're splitting two 22mm feeds, not two 15mm feeds. Hopefully you can understand why. So the first thing we've got to do is turn the hot and cold water off. So this is the cold feed, so I should just be able to knock this off just like that. Okay, that's the cold feed off now. The hot feed is slightly different. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just probably knock that off as well. You're not gonna like this, Max. But the hot feed turns off down here. <laughs> but I'm not gonna, I'm not actually gonna show you how I do that because every system's different. And I don't want you as a novice to go, oh, my hot feed one doesn't look like that and you turn it off. Or you find inadvertently that one does look like that and you turn it off and it wasn't the right valve. But there's a way of making sure and we're gonna go downstairs now to prove that we've turned them off. We're gonna open that up. Now the cold side should go off quite quickly, but the hot, we've got quite a lot of built up. Oh, actually no, it's gone off pretty quick as well. Quite happy with that. Uh, and then just flush a toilet or something. So we're proving that the water's turned off and we're gonna be happy to move on to the next bit. I know it's going on that towel, but that's what towels are for. While we're down here as well, um, I might have to slacken off this nut here and that nut here just to get a bit of lift in the pipe so I can get my pipe slice underneath. This is plumber's problems, all right? Plumbers who are watching right now know exactly what I'm doing. DIYers would be like, well, why the hell are you doing that? But hopefully you'll see why. Right, this is incredibly niche, but I've just unplugged my secondary return pump, which is the one at the back there. I'm only telling you that because I know that some long-term plumber parts people are gonna be like, what did you do about the secondary return? I switched it off and I valved it off. So now we're ready to cut into these two pipes here 
and get our tees in. If you're cutting something, there's loads of little tricks you can do. Lift the pipe up a little bit, just so your pipe size fits in here, like that. It's real life, mate. There we go. Just let that suck. So that's sucking air now through our cut, and it's coming out of those taps that we've left open downstairs. Seriously, guys, that's a nice, uh, that's a good sound, that is. The other sound you get is blah, 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 like that, and you're like, oh no. I feel like the captain of the Titanic. Right, so there's one cut. So you can pop that on there like that. Or the best way is to lay your tee or whatever you're cutting out at that bit there. And then you'll know how much to cut out here, okay? So we're just gonna cut a little bit more out. And obviously the center of our pipe slice goes where, exactly where I put my finger like that. And then we're on. that it's probably worth more than what it was when i bought it put it that way so the next one we've got we're going to cut off in here as well this is going to be difficult i think we might have to remove we might have to slacken this nut here slacken the nut under this valve and also slacken the nut downstairs as well to be able to get the movement we want obviously the first thing i'm going to try to do is bend the pipe up by forcing it <laughs> ain't going nowhere is it let's have a look there's got to be a way there's always a way max isn't there is it because you did it too well before though yeah, I've probably I fitted this too well. Thanks, Max. Cheers. You're welcome, mate. Keep saying that. All right, got to take that off. Nice chance for me to inspect how much I clean my pipes down. First thing we're going to do is undo this one because it's at the top. Does she move? Will she pop? Come on, pop. Pop! <laughs> she ain't popping nowhere. This is when we find that one. Go back. <laughs> go back, you pig. <laughs> I've got to go downstairs and undo that, haven't I? Come on, let's go. Told you this would be the hard bit, mate. Every job's got its hard bit, and this is it. Cutting into the old pipe, always a nightmare. <coughs> Plumber parts people, comment below whether you want me to do a video in here of putting in proper airing covered racking and not just the utter guff that I have to come across all the time that's really hard to get out and, oh mate, it's just a nightmare. Right, so look, look at that. Wow, it's moving really easy. Yeah, what a git of a job this can be. <laughs> That's why plumbers are on 400 quid a day. This is when someone will comment, oh, you didn't get the burrs off. Well, good luck getting the burrs out of those two bits that aren't moving anywhere. Right, so now we need to clean up each end of these pipes. They need to be completely clean because you guys know that if we don't clean them properly, when we come to solder them, they will not solder up. And the levels of fury that will come out will just be gargantuan. Fluctuator, literally the best tool there is when it comes to soldering, I love it. Don't use their flux though, I use Laco in mine. But just look at it, compare that to the old tub and brush, it's brilliant. And it's on the Amazon store as well. So our cold is gonna elbow out of here straight away. This is what I'm hoping. Then we'll come out to here. So when I realize that I need to get my pipe vendors, which are at the studio, and then we have that one there like that. That will come out there, yeah? And typically the hot is obviously on the wrong side. Hot will be into there. And the cold will come down here like so. And go in there, all right? All we've got to do now is get it done. A lot of people ask, why is a uh, copper length three meters? Try and prove me wrong, yeah? It's because it's exactly the right height for you to prop it up so you can get it when you're in the loft. It's got to be, isn't it? Most rooms are two four, so three meters is perfect. Look at that ass, I did glutes today. God damn. The good thing is, right, once you've got these, once I've got these valves on, what I could usually do is carry on just, you know, getting the rest of this installed. But I've got a whole house here with the water off at the moment. And I'd like to know that the pipe work I've done there, the soldering I've done down there, which is utterly substandard, um, is gonna hold, basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these two valves in, get them nipped up, turned off, 
Gonna get everything nipped up that I've loosened off along over there, those valves there, the two valves downstairs, or the valve downstairs I've nipped off. We're gonna then turn the water on and make sure that everything's holding how it should do. Is that all the steam? That's cause your... Yeah, that's why that one's gonna leak. And when it does, boy, am I gonna go insane. Right, so now I'm just going to pop downstairs. We're going to get that other bit of pipe nipped up that we slackened off earlier on. And then we're going to go, before we do any move, turning on of any stuff, we're just going to come back up here and make sure everything's okay. But I'm not going to film that. When I say when everything's okay, there's no like glaring emissions before I fill up. Like something like I've left this bit of pipe unplugged or, you know, something stupid. So I think we haven't done anything too stupid, apart from that lovely bit of soldering. The summer's gone and all the roses. Right, so I'm turning off the hot and the cold here. And also this one here is actually our secondary return, so I'll turn that off. That means that I don't have to shut all the taps and everything down here now, make sure, because my wife might have turned on a tap downstairs and I don't want that argument at the moment. So these are all off, that's the whole house off. So we'll just be pressurizing the pipe above here, which means we'll pressurize quicker, which means we'll know straight away whether that second solder leaks or not. I think it's gonna leak. Max thinks it isn't gonna leak. Well, Max, you're not a professional plumber, mate. Let's do the hot first, all right? So the hot I turned off over here. Good luck craning your head around to see that lot, Max. So I just give it a little bit of a nip up. So we're not flying water through at some crazy rate. We're just doing things slowly. And look, I can open this. So we're letting a bit out of there. Open this up. What the hell? How's that not leaking? That will leak in a minute, honestly, as that pressurises. Let's give it a bit more, shall we? Yeah, look, there it is, it's leaking, I told you it'd leak. <laughs> Turn it off, oh. I told you. Uh, all right, well, I'm gonna have to go downstairs, open up that tap, drain it all out, and then do the same thing again. Bums. Turn the camera off. There we go, we fixed the leak. Well, you do have leaks, right? And the bit that we had a problem on was this one here, with that big, lovely blob of solder underneath that no one's ever gonna see again. That is like the hardest bit of the job done. Getting this particular piece in here, soldering onto older pipes if you're not experienced and you don't know all the little tricks that we had to use there to do it um, and some of you're going to go oh you burnt your floor well there we go right if i'd done that downstairs i would have used a heat map but the heat map's in the van and the van is broken down and it's about three miles away basically what we need to do now is just a nice little bit of pipe work to get these up and over into here i'm afraid we've got to use push fits on these I've just seen something that is not good. You're not going to be very happy, Max. You're not putting this in the video. Low pressure digital valve. That means we can't fit it on this system. <laughs> <laughs> you were joking. I've had it under my bed for a year. <laughs> I've had it under my bed for a year and I've not noticed. Come back tomorrow for part two where you can see me rectify this complete nightmare of a situation. Or if you're watching this video later on in the year, you can click on it now to see how I got around this problem.